if you know it's the right thing to do and you're comfortable with it, you're supposed to do it. In 1960 in Houston, Texas, the harsh realities of Jim Crow laws were inescapable. There was turmoil, racial injustice, and economic injustice. But a close-knit group of Texas Southern University students believed they could change injustice to justice. It's a pity that in the 20th century, with all the major problems of the world, I, as an American, can't sit in a, a supermarket lunch counter and have lunch. On March 4, 1960, TSU students gathered at a flagpole on campus and marched 15 blocks to Wine Garden Supermarket on Almeda. Their objective was simple, to be served at a lunch counter like their white counterparts. But that wouldn't happen. This courageous act, which grew to be known as Houston's first sit-in, would be one of many in which TSU students would strike out against Houston's segregated laws. Actually, we just wanted to be treated like uh, an ordinary citizen. We felt that our time had come, that we no longer had to go to the back door and uh, be treated less than a uh, citizen. Many white politicians at the time underestimated the students' efforts. Holly Hogelbrooks remembers vividly statements made by then-Senator Lyndon Johnson. And then that wonderful, honorable Senator Lyndon Johnson announced that he said, my Negroes in Texas are complacent. We won't have to worry about that. Now, for me, it was like, I got your complacent, buddy. And don't get me wrong, I learned to respect that man because as a president, he came full circle from the politician he was as senator. But I guess his Negroes just wasn't that complacent. Like a team of military strategists, the students planned how they would dismantle Houston's Jim Crow. Some innocent African Americans became victims of hate crimes because of the student movement. Felton Turner was beat with chains, tied to a tree, and left for dead. Well, have you ever taken any part in any of the local sit-down demonstrations? No, sir, sure haven't. Are you, by any chance, a student at TSU? No, sir. Well, why did these boys single you out? Beat me, I just don't know. Did you know the boys? No, sir. Had you ever seen them before? No, sir, I haven't. Well, can you tell us exactly what they did to you after they stopped you? Well, they, two of them came out of the car, each one of them had a gun. And this Russian grabbed me from each side and drove me in the back of the car and tied my hands behind my back and started beating me in the head with chains. And then they mentioned something about some APC sit-down strike. And then they took me on down where they had me, where they took, tied me in that tree. And they beat me up until they thought I was out. And they hanged me up in that tree. And one of them said, if I try to escape or get the gag out my mouth to holler or something, they was gonna, he'd come back and kill me. Well, how long would you say that they beat on you? Oh, probably about 30 minutes. The students would not give up their fight for justice and equality, even though many white Houstonians had mixed emotions about desegregation. Well, I think it's a wonderful thing, but I don't think it's going to be very easy. Well, personally, I, I think uh, it's unconstitutional, the public accommodations part of it, and I think the uh, fair employment part goes too far, uh, particularly in Texas. Well, I believe that it will give us some of the things that we think we need the chance to go into a restaurant and eat without having to go on the outskirts of town. I think that uh, it would be more or less considered as a challenge, and I think the challenge was met with achievement. I haven't thought about it. Well, there's several parts of it I can't go along with at all. I like it. I think it's a good idea. Well, I think it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. I think it's the greatest step forward we've taken in 100 years. Political scientist Dr. Sanders Anderson says Houston is too often undercredited for its role in the civil rights movement. He says the students were smart, relentless, and most important, agents for change. The political legacy now is in the state legislature, it's in the city council, it's throughout the area in terms of people running for office and those who are thinking to, of running for office. But still, that needs to be more uh, in, in involved in that. The, very existence of Texas Southern University 
uh, being threatened as, in terms of its independence uh, has to be looked at because were it not for a Texas Southern University in Houston, Texas, things would have been much more difficult. While the movement left a profound legacy, there were some unanticipated consequences, according to Dr. Howard Beef, historian and professor at TSU. Before the civil rights movement nationally and in Houston occurred, um, all of the ethnic or color groups in the city had their own space. And in their own space, they developed their own culture, their own churches, their own religious ways and means, their own businesses, their own schools, their own neighborhoods. Um, to the extent that the civil rights movement succeeded, it, re it removed the barriers that had isolated people and put cultures at risk. From 1960 to 1963, Texas Southern University students changed Houston forever.